So today we're finally going to do the first tutorial for Lavender Town. I've been posting little bits of it around. I'm really excited. It's been really fun to build. Um, you might be able to see in the video, but my Isle of Awakening is starting to get a little slow. So I've decided to actually move the entire town over to a Buildatopia where I'm going to probably build all of Kanto. So today we're just going to start with the houses. Uh, the purple houses so you'll see in this tutorial we are going to be building in a spot that isn't all nice and purple like it needs to be but we'll terraform it later so you'll see we will be following a blueprint here so some things will automatically connect when they won't for you so we'll need a few things we are gonna need a lot of purple dye we're going to need about 80 of the wooden wall dyed purple uh, about 200 hardwood tiles, 200 hardwood columns, and about 170 purple roof as well, the terracotta roof. Um, so the hardwood columns are the first thing we're going to do. And it's a good time to point out that if you have your ulti mallet equipped, uh, it's a good idea to unequip it during a build unless you're specifically trying to get individual items Especially when you're working with infinite pieces like this. It means if you put a piece wrong It's a bit more of a struggle to put it back in its right place So we're going to start with the left hand side and we're going to do two down and six across and Then we'll need our chisel for this. We're going to go through and we're going to chisel the whole thing except this very last block here we want to leave that one unchiseled because it is going to form part of a pillar so now on the left hand side of this we want to go 10 down so that we are a total of 12 and then down the back we want to go across 11 so we want to have a section then that is 12 by 12 on the left and the back and then along the right hand side we're going to do 11 so we want to be one in from the left hand side so now we want to go ahead and do the support pillars which will also be hardwood columns on the edges they're going to be five high so I will be using my build noculars for parts of this to get that you will need to complete all 60 tablet targets I recommend if you don't have your build noculars to go around and place the blocks from underneath like I did so that when you finish you end up on the roof ready to start tiling. So once you've gone around on the four corners on the back you just want to do one pillar and on the front you want to do two, one in on the left hand side so you want to match it up and align it with the right hand side. Once we've done that we can go ahead and do the two pillars that are going to be on either side of the door and they're going to be four high so they're going to be one less than these pillars on either side and that's so we can fit in our slime lattices so now we'll just do a support along the top of the pillars so we know where the roof's going to go this is decorative because the roof will be sitting on top of it now if you need to get individual bits of an item you can either pick them up with your gloves but that can take a while um, or you can hit them with your altar mallet to get a bunch of the individual item there's also a bench you can craft called the sticklers sifter and that will allow you to craft infinite pieces individually of all the infinite items which is really handy so for these supports just to get that nice lined effect we want to use just the top pieces so once we've gone along and done that on the three back sides we can start moving on to filling in a little bit more So now we want to use our purple wall and go around and just fill in all the gaps. So on the right hand side we want to fill this all the way up to the top of the pillars. And then we're going to go over on the left hand side and fill it up but we want to leave space for the window. So we'll go one across here 
and then we'll go all the way up on either side and across and then the next one down we want to be hardwood and we'll put the windows in the bottom two. Now these individual pieces of hardwood shouldn't need to be uh, placed as individual ones because they're not connected to other bits. They should just go in plain like that. So now we can go ahead and start filling in where our slime grates will be. I think these things give a really nice effect, especially if you put lights behind them. So once we've filled that up, we can go ahead and put our two layers of purple below the slime. And we're gonna put in our connecting doors. And above that, we're gonna put a, another uh, slime carved mural. So that's the front pretty much done obviously we'll come back and do some decoration on it but we'll move around and finish all the walls so the right and the left wall will be the same so we want to go around and we want to do with our purple wood we want to go and do three across on either side of the wall and we want to make it three high as well and then we want to go ahead like the front on the left hand side and put in our connecting window our hardwood tiles and our slime grates. It can be a little difficult to place the slime carved murals. Um, I tend to call them grates, I'm not sure why. Um, it can be hard to place them sometimes on the right angle, sometimes without the build binoculars you will need to build a scaffold directly one block outside so that you can line them up all evenly. So once we've done that, we'll go ahead and do exactly the same thing on the left hand side as well. And once that's done, we can move to the back. So on the back wall, we want to do two windows. So what we're going to do is get our purple wall and we're going to put it on either side of the window. So we want three high of the purple on either side of the pillars. And then we want to place one two in as well to leave room for that window. And we don't want to fill the middle part up because we're going to put some hardwood pillars in there just to add a little variation. So we'll go ahead and put in our windows and like the rest of our windows, we'll put our hardwood blocks on the top row above them as well just to give the whole thing symmetry. So once we've done this, we'll go ahead and put our pillars and we'll do them all the way to the top and then we will put in our slime grates as well our carved murals and then that will be the back done apart from the blinds as well which we'll go put around later so now that this is done we can go ahead and start building the roof so uh, scare cubs and scare cats are really good to use while you're building to help you get on roofs without having to build supports. So the next thing we want to do is go around and do a border that our roof is going to sit on. Now it doesn't specifically have to be the hardwood blocks. This isn't really going to be visible. So I just wanted to use something that was slightly different from the actual infinity blocks I was using so that it didn't tile incorrectly and so that I got an idea of exactly where the roof was in comparison to the visible parts of the building. So once we've gone around and done a border and we want to incorporate that front pillar as well so that it's got to hang on the front. I want to go around and do two layers of full wraparound roof and you'll find with the purple tiled terracotta roof the great thing is it has those yellow borders down the side which add just a little bit of sort of extra decoration. And so once we've gone around and done two layers one on the outside of that barrier and one on top we need to go ahead and we actually need to fill in that total square. Now we don't need to totally fill it in but it makes it a little bit easier to work in the space and it also leaves a foundation for your lights on the inside. So once we've gone ahead and fully filled that space in we want to go back and get our hardwood columns again 
and we want to place a border around that filled space so just one in on each corner and then on the sides of the house we want to put one in the middle as well so that's going to form the basis of our next roof foundation so we'll go around and we just want to put in our carved murals our slime grates and then on top of that we want to do a border that our roof will sit on So like the first border of the roof, we're going to do it too high. So we're going to do one on the outside, going all the way around. And then one on top as well. And then like the layer underneath, we want to go ahead and we want to fill the whole section in so that we can work in it a little bit easier. Now that we've done that, again we want to get our hardwood tiles and we want to go one in on each side. Now on the front and the back we want to get our individual pieces and I've used the middle pieces on either side and the bottom pieces in the middle. Um, and then on the sides I've just used all middle pieces. So that's just to give it an extra tiny bit of decoration. I feel like these little bits make a difference when you add them up at the end. So now you don't need to do this but I'm going to put some sinister sconces in there just so that we have a little bit of a blue flame effect. So on the front and the back we will put our grates and then on the sides we will put our roof but we don't want it overhanging. So with the grates don't actually put them in first I just wanted to show you that you'll need to have a roof available to be able to tile on so we'll need to remove these for now and then we'll just go ahead and put some blocks in and then we can place our roof on top. So you may need to play around with this, it may not tile correctly the first time. You may need to get the sifter and place these pieces individually. But we essentially just want to do a little top cap that is 2 by 3 And if you follow this exactly, the two should be on the front so that it all sort of looks nice and neat and the three is on the sides. You can always play around with this design as well with different materials um, obviously so it's not a lavender town build and it would still make a really nice house. So we're getting pretty close to done now. Um, the main structure is done, we just need to put in the bits and bobs. So the blinds are great but just be aware you need to place them on top of something. For some reason they don't work like a wall hanging. Um, it's also a bit annoying changing the orientation. You will actually have to make a border like that for each one and go up and change it and then remove them. So once we've gone ahead and put our blinds on all of our windows, it's looking pretty close to done. So we'll put in wall brackets just at the front um, just to add a nice little bit of decoration. And the buttress I, um, is not necessary, but I think it kind of looks a little bit sort of ghost-like, so it is good for Lavender Town. And I had originally used dry ivy, but I'm going to use uh, fresh ivy because I think that brighter green gives it a bit of extra pop. And then we've got our nice yellow lights above the doorway. And inside we'll be putting our fancy lights. You can put any lights you want, obviously, on the inside, but I recommend if you're trying to do like a lavender town build like this, using the fancy lights is specifically because they give off a very strong orange glow. So the benefit of that is it's in high contrast to the purple. So it really, at night especially, helps those purple buildings kind of pop and stand out. So that is pretty much it. I, right now I'm going with probably copper floors inside. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do for decoration because we do wanna move on to bigger and better things soon. It may take me a little while to get the next tutorials up for the Pokemon Center and the item shop, just because I want to do a little bit of terraforming first so that it looks within the style, but I'll be sure to do a short video about uh, tips on how to terraform and where to find all of the items you'll need if you're doing a Lavender Town build. 
Uh, so that was it. I'm pretty excited about doing this. I'm not quite sure how much of Canto I'm going to do, um, but soon I will also put this up on the notice board. So hopefully when the tutorial comes out, you'll be able to come visit this building straight away. All right. Thanks, guys.